Hello and good afternoon. Hello, I'm looking for Arrow. That's me. Cool, I'm Chris. Hey, Chris. Man, I'll tell you what, we got to talk about this music because, I mean, you, you, you are exploring things that so many others won't even go toward because I love it. You are really into building a song. Yes, I am. Thank you, man. I mean, it's a bit, but how does it come to you? Is it, is it sitting right there in the studio and we're going to do this one track at a time? Sometimes. Um, then there's the Holy mackerel. I have an idea. <laughs> I have to get the whole thing down now before it escapes me. Right. You know? I mean, it's like, hurry, 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 hurry. Um, <laughs> to the point like singing into the phone, you know, and just la la lying it or clanky clanky on the guitar. You know, Cause you're not plugged in. But then there's other ones where like, okay, let's, like you said, let's build this. This has to do a certain thing. So let's be careful with the stucco here and the frets go here and the, you know, the paneling here and the, you know, and you make sure it's all right. Now, I know that you guys came together because you brought all of your inspirations. Part of that inspiration, did it include, include the group? Yes, because you, it's so progressive. There's, there's, I, I mean, I listen to the vocals. I listen to the bass. I listen, every single instrument that's in there is there for a reason. Oh, yeah. Um, I mean, no pun intended, yes and no. Um, <laughs> growing up, you couldn't get, you certainly couldn't get away from them, right? Yeah. They were, I mean, they were everywhere. Um, and Chris Squire was just such a good bass player. And Steve Howe played these guitar parts that I still don't know how to play. Um, but yeah, that was, and talk about constructing something, Lordy Bagordy, you know? Um, they, um, they're certainly in there. Um, and I think vocally, maybe they probably show up, you know, because I like harmonies. Yeah. Um, and, and, you know, on their, I think I want to say their first album, they did a Beatles cover. So, you know, they like harmonies too. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it's an interesting one. I haven't heard that one. I'm, I'm glad that you brought up the harmonies because I remember being in the studio and my engineer was so against that. And, and I, I was so disappointed. I, I kept going, well, this is my song. No, you relinquish control to me. And, and so do you ever go through that kind of a method? Um, no, since I'm producing it, no, luckily. Yeah. Um, but, uh, I think some of the other producers I did work with, um, if they were skeptical, I'd say, you know, just, we've got to try it. You know, what's the worst that happens? You know, it sounds great and you get credit for it or it stinks and I get, you know, the blame. So it's, you know, we, we can't lose here. Cause I've, you know, I've, <laughs> I gotta be careful cause I'll just keep throwing harmonies. Yeah. On. Yeah. You know, yeah. just like, Oh, this were to work and Oh, I can do kind of a counterpoint thing here. And then it's just slow down. <laughs> don't, you know, don't, don't uh, corsage it to death here. Just, you know, Get in, get out. Well, speaking of those harmonies, those twin guitars, oh, my God. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, those are, um, you don't really hear them a lot these days. You hear, like, Avenged Sevenfold does them and some of the other metal bands, but that kind of sing-songy almost um, essential to the hook of the song, guitars, um, people don't really do them. I mean, Judas Priest is still out there and doing stuff, but I was listening to Def Leppard's High and Dry a couple of months ago for the first time in forever and realized that how much of it, like a Junior Thin Lizzy record that is. Mm -hmm. um, the guitars are so essential, how they interweave uh, their, their melodies uh, in and out of the, the vocal melodies. And um, yeah, I've, I've just always loved those. And they're, they're just so distinctive when they hit you. You can't miss it. Yeah, I mean, it, it always gives me, I mean, even when I listen to Hotel California from the Eagles, I mean, to this day, when I hear those twin guitars, it still gets inside my soul. Oh, totally. Absolutely. And um, and to watch them play it live and they just kill it every <laughs> time. You know, And just kind of go, man, because you know that took writing. You know, that took rehearsal and execution, but the, the feel of it, like I said, just grabs you every time since, you know, 1976 or whatever it is. I love the fact that you are using all the musical instruments in the way that, that, that music was meant for, because we live in this electronic age where everybody is going into some, you know, electronic drums or they're going into some sort of a DJ beats and things. But you guys are keeping it very, very real. Yeah, it's I think um, part of that would be that's how we grew up. Yeah. You know, a bunch of guys in a room hashing something out. Uh, and playing a lot of live gigs. And like when um, when I was in Saigon Kick and we would do our records, those are entire takes we kept. Like all th Jason, Phil, and I all playing at the same time. Wow. From the beginning to the end. And rarely more than three takes. There's only two songs. One was Space Oddity of all things, which we had played for you know half a year on tour and we, it took us 11 takes to get it right. <laughs> no one could figure that one out. And then so painfully off of uh, Devil in the Details, which took about 
13 and 14 because I broke my hand at dinner, but it was the last song that we were going to record and I had written it. So I'm like, okay, I got everyone drunk. And then we just <laughs> hammered our way literally through it. And there's uh, that's, but that's, those are the only two that took more than one or two takes ever. That's so funny that you say that because when I, when I get with book authors, I, I ask the, one of the main questions is, is I go, where, where was your wine glass moment in the story? Because you're, when, when you, when you have a little bit of alcohol, I swear you take chances. Oh Yeah. Oh yeah, man. I mean, there's um, and there's studies to back it up. It, but it's that walking, it's walking over the bridge. You know, it's not jumping in. Yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, it's so many times. Uh, Hemingway had a thing about um, write drunk, edit sober. <laughs> <laughs> and if you, you know, know anything about him, oh, I get that, that. makes sense, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> creating the band it reminds me of an episode with gordon ramsay because gordon ramsay was all about what inspires you now make it yeah. your own yep 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 and um i think in this case uh, since i it was a uh, an assignment i gave myself yeah to if i was going to write an entire record for thin lizzie in modern times and just say here guys here, go all for you you know um so you have to sit there and think all right um what, what's inspiring me here? Well, I want to be in the band. So how do I create that um, and be faithful to it, but not look like it's just, you know, I'm copying riffs. I go, Oh my God, he just stole that from, you know, song X, Y, or Z, or, you know, off the third, fourth record, whatever it is. So the whole idea was, okay. Um, I want to be good because I'm in a place in my career where I think people expect that. Uh, but there's also, uh, you want to be faithful and honor those, you know, because you're standing on the shoulders of giants. So yeah. you, you better do a good job. Yeah. And that was a big part of the inspiration, both for, for everybody involved. They just wanted to do really well. Yeah. The video for Take It All, the way that you open it up with the sky in full motion, you know, you get that little bit of peace, and then all of a sudden, oh, my God, Mayhem. we're going to war. Mayhem. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. and, and I'd like to, and Phil Verón um, did that, and he, uh, he did things for me. He's, he's like, where he always puts little, like, Easter eggs in, did you catch this, did you catch that? Mm -hmm. And when the band begins right after the first set of riffs, you see the guy slam his visor down in time. Bang! And it's oh. like, yeah, I caught that. And at the very end, when the gong hits, uh, the the soldier's um, uh, sword comes down and hits the other guy's shield right in time, too. <laughs> so. Well, it, it, it fits so much into what's going on in the world today. I mean, the media can keep try to keep war out of our picture, but my God, it seems like everybody's at each other's throats right, right now. And, I mean, you even say, we are bred to fight. Yeah, Yep. I mean, it's like it or not, man, it's territorial. And, yeah. um, and, and that's a, just it's the way it's always been. I mean, I remember my kids when they're little saying, well, dad, why did, why did war start? And I was like, well, it's, a lot of times it's because somebody wants somebody else's stuff and they're just going to go get it. Um, <laughs> and that's what happens. And, uh, you know, I want your stuff. I, I, or it's there. I don't like what you did. There's that. Yeah. And, uh, and then there's a lot of times your God is the wrong one. Yeah. Um, so it, those are pretty strong, three strong reasons people go every time. Um, and uh, but yeah, like you said, kind of specifically, we'd um, we'd also done uh, for the Ukraine Russia situation, uh, should we shall call it. Um, we did uh, a cover of Gary Moore's "Out in the Fields" Ooh. as well. Ooh. Yeah, that's on the Bandcamp site too. So uh, and then we donate all. We actually we don't donate anything. It's it's, it's a free download. But it also um, uh, you, you you can choose which charity you'd like to contribute to in a link, which would be, let's say you're into, you know, how to uh, save, um, you know, pets, right? You know, cause these people run, you know, yeah. they're trying to get out of the house and live, or maybe it's a clothing shelter, or maybe it's a medicine transport or whatever you're, you're giving a bunch of charities to, contribute to so you get to choose it my neighbor joe is uh, over in ukraine in in the way that he's over there as a journalist and the reason why he's there and has been there since the covid lockdown was because he's documenting the music of ukraine and it's oh, just wow. amazing the stories that he comes up with and the videos that he sends my way they're still playing music the war is going on but the music hasn't stopped dude oh yeah absolutely i mean look at how if you go back to world war ii you know, i wasn't there obviously but how much music got everybody through it yeah i mean it was it was as important as the movies but the thing i think with music is you can broadcast it over the air somehow it's, it's tougher to do that it's easier now with phones and stuff but it's it's music is always a lot more portable you know to kind of uh, maintain and, and um keep peace with your emotions would you say that we're currently living in the greatest music exploration times yeah yeah because nobody knows where it's going yeah you know we are all out in the middle of the ocean just circling and hitting you know some are you know, running aground and some are getting caught in a storm and some are having smooth sailing but yeah i think to your point earlier about the technology 
some of that is opening things up so wide and it's awesome. And the, the ability to, let's say, contribute uh, to a song with someone who lives um, in, I don't know, Blackpool, England, um, is unbelievably cool. However, I think what, the, what has changed is typically um, in music, there's certain styles due to certain regions, like the British invasion yeah, was just, yeah. it seemed to hit the Americans out of nowhere. Um, or like Southern rock was different than, let's say in the 70s and 80s. Southern rock was different than New York punk, which was different from LA punk, which was different from, um, you know, Texas rock, which was, you know, different from the, the city bands like Aerosmith. Um, and that's just America. And I think there seems to be a bit of homogeny going on now, to, to my ears, where it's kind of like if it gets a little more almost like um, protective and regional, it might be a little more distinctive. Yeah, because I'm starting to notice that even California rock is really picking back up again. Sunset is really, you know, you know, got those those bands again, and 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 that's that seems to be what what radio is missing is that give me give me some of that great rock. I I need to have some right now. Yeah, yeah, it's it's funny, man. We I sat down and was listening to Van Halen with my daughter who's 26, and she picked up on the vibe of, vibe of it right away. Just that. that whatever that was that i heard you know when i was um you know 15 or 16 we we're just like what is what's what's being transferred here you know that's been captured um and and yeah i mean a kid's going to be a kid every time they're always going to do the same thing that's why you're all, the bands like all the punk bands and slayer and metallica they, they always seem to hit a certain age group yeah. no matter what <laughs> yeah, and, um, and yeah, and it's and it's appearing on Spotify and on iHeartRadio and things like that yeah, on, on their yeah. phones, on their playlist. And it just blows mm -hmm. me away that you could be a high school student and you're listening to the same stuff I paid 99 cents for on a 45. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's great. Uh, my kids uh, were watching Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Yeah. And as, as the songs were coming up on the soundtrack, I was singing them from the other room. And they're like, how do you know these? Like, are you kidding? <laughs> Like, you know, every one is like, yeah, these are, these are huge songs. And then of course they, they go out and get them. So they're listening to, you know, Billie Eilish and Redbone. You know, yeah. It makes sense to them. Whereas when I was a kid, it was definitely more, uh, I think you're more of a category, category guy. You were like into the, the, you know, the soft pop, like, you know, um, like the pop pop, like, yeah. uh, um, what's a good example, like Diana Ross, Michael Jackson and, um, that sort of thing. There was kind of what is now called yacht rock. There was that. Yeah. Then there was, you know, rock and then there was the burgeonings of heavy metal and you kind of stayed within your own yard um you didn't really venture out too much but the smart ones did i'll never forget the very first time that uh, my mother was singing one of my favorite songs ain't that a shame from a uh, cheap trick and i go how do you know this song <laughs> right. and, and, you know, and then that's where i got my fats domino uh, lecture right yes exactly and i've said that to my my kids and my nieces and nephews like you know and my neighbors and you know, go back and that's a cover go back and like, what yeah go back and listen to the original <laughs> and you know all, i'm always a fan of going back and finding out um where the inspiration came from in, in your in your favorite artists like go to judas priest again for a second they picked the weirdest covers i mean yeah. joan baez really guys how did, i would have loved to bet in that band meeting well, let's say you know Glenn Tipton brought in Diamonds and Rust by Joan Baez to Judas Priest and said, "Hey, I got an idea for a cover. Who? Joan Baez? You're out of your mind. <laughs> no, wait a second. Just hold me out. Just hold on. Watch. Uh, it sounds kind of cool. All right, you know. It's, but then you go that maybe go find the um the, the Joan Baez stuff and, and just kind of dig through there. And then of course my aunt said, "Oh, Joan Baez is this and this and that. Okay, cool. Opened up you know some more uh, some more ears." I've been with Judas Priest so many times, and I, I always have to bring up the question, why are you still doing your thing? And they go, because we're kids, and we will never stop <laughs> loving what we're doing. And it just inspires, I just want to hear them say that every single time. Yeah, yeah, and it's true, man. I mean, it's, you know, you know, Picasso lived to, you know, what age, and he was, you know, sprite, uh, sprightly and weird and, you know, quirky all the way to the end, just because... I think he was, if you're expressing your true self, it's easier to keep that um, that youthfulness. Um, I think Jung was a, a big fan of playing and, and remembering who that inner child is. Yeah. And, and it's a difference between ch being childish and childlike. Yeah. You know? yeah. So you want to be childlike. Um, although we I am a musician, so I certainly know more of the former. Um, but, you know, it's you have to maintain that wonder and excitement and exploratory stuff every time every time you do something creative yeah because people ask me after 44 years why am i still in radio and i said because i don't want to face that 14 year old kid who had a dream i'm not going to tell right, him yeah. that it's over right right totally agree so now three dog night was best known for three vocalists you've got so many drummers on this who do you take out on the road <laughs> yeah no kidding huh 
It's like the reverse of Spinal Tap. They all live. <laughs> um, but uh, by the way, Three Dog Night, another band that just, you know, no, boy, talk about taking a song uh, that someone wrote and making it your own. Mm-hmm. Just crazy. Like um, Mama Tone and the Answer Coming. That between their version, which is, a, I don't know who arranged their stuff, but it was unbelievable. But how they got that from that Randy Newman song, which <laughs> when you hear him do it, it sounds like Randy Newman. There's no yeah, doubt. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no doubt. Um, but yeah, they were the masters at it. But back to your question, the it started because um, Mark Van uh was we wrote kind of the, um, the, I wrote the first couple of tunes and just threw them at Mark because Mark understands that style. Like it's got to be kind of rock but jazzy R and B and whatever. And that was um, what might have been. And I said, I want the middle of this to sound kind of like Bad Reputation, you know. But just do what you do. Uh, that's all. Yeah, just go. So Mark was first, and then I think Barry was next. Barry Kurtz from Shine Down. He did. Um, take it all and he did uh what might have been and he did kingpin um and he's done some on the on the the, the, the canal follow-ups we got coming here and then rick and um eric were uh you know thrown in there as well so just everyone kind of volunteered for the song they wanted to play wow. but, but like i knew barry would kill what have i done because it's six eight and he's just he's just great in six he just is um and he's got a jazz background he's like please let me play that one you on go knock, knock yourself out dude i'm not gonna stop you all seven and eight all seven uh, 55 of it or whatever yeah, go <laughs> I, I, I love what you guys are doing with the band because we, it seems like that we're in this age of music where everybody is getting along and it's not record company against record company bands yeah. are creating together there, there's there's unity yes uh, i think part of that was uh believe it or not covid yeah um because you had a lot of uh, collaborations that you normally would not get through things like zoom yeah um and acapella and all that sort of stuff uh, but i also i think it's 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 something in the in the air too because my son's in a band and they tour and i mean he's you know he decided to pick up the drums three years ago he's 22 and all of a sudden they're out touring I'm like, okay i don't know where you got that and you had to be a drummer huh <laughs> yeah right so, um, but yeah their their community is exactly what you're talking about they all collaborate they, they stay each other's houses they they um they organize the gigs together they kind of travel together it's it's really very very um like ethically collaborative and it's cool to watch because it's very natural. And, um, but I think it's spilling over into other things too. Does he ever open up and uh, cause you know, so many times musicians when they're, when they're out there on the road, especially in the beginning days, yeah, you got to make that choice at midnight. Do we hit a Taco Bell or a convenience store? <laughs> yeah. They, well, they seem to favor Waffle House. Oh my really, God. Of course. Yeah. Really brave. <laughs> but he, he had his, uh, he had his run in with Shoney's on one of their runs. And I said, yeah, yeah, you want to do that again? Wait. Yeah, yeah. I said, look, worst comes to worst. Just get some beef jerky and Diet Pepsi. You'll be fine. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so where can people go to find out more about the band, the new music? And, and I, there's got to be a tour somewhere along this line. <laughs> well, I'd say, yeah, if I can get my drummers all in one place. That's yeah, right. <laughs> um, the uh, uh, Canal at Bandcamp, just go to Bandcamp and type in Canal. That's, that's the best right now um, because it's it's literally, it's direct to you. We have actual hard copies of the CD if you want one of those. Um, and I mean, you know, I put I post stuff on my Facebook and all that sort of stuff, but there's no um, uh, there's no like a, what do they call it like a like a general store where you go to uh, the, the canal dot uh, com website or whatever just yet because I'm more interested in just I want the music out there now um, as opposed to uh, the other accoutrements that come with it. Yeah. And as, as for touring, it, it's a, an idea of um, you know fun to do, but like Barry and and Rick, you know, Rick is Barry's drum tech, so the Shine Down's home now, but they're out. In July, and then home again, and then out with Papa Roach in the fall. So, you know, I doubt I'll get you know either <laughs> to pick up a pair of sticks for me until the end of the year. But that's okay, you know. And you never know. Rickard, who played um, the drums on "Say Goodbye," he uh, he's a local guy. He knows how to play all that stuff. He knows the, the other the drummers. He you know, was helping. He helped record a lot of it. So um, he'd probably be choice number one to to do live gigs. But it, that's just a matter of you know uh, the other uh, the matter of doing it. But the other question is for me. Do I play guitar or do I play bass? Because I put, did oh, both on the record. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So if, and Colin's like, you know, uh, dude, you got to play guitar. I mean, you got to do these solos with me, and I'm just going, okay. But who's going to play bass the way I want to hear it? Because right. th that style is very specific. It's not. It's not rock, but it is rock, and yeah. it's almost like you're you're singing. Uh, in some cases, like uh, certainly with Line that he did this, it felt like beat poetry over like an R and B bass line. Like he grabbed the guy from the OJ's. And then you know had him read beat poetry, and it just it's this amazing rhythmic fit. So if that's not right, and the bass player plays it too straight, um, 
it's going to then take that bed that the guitar harmony sit on and kind of tweak it. And so I don't know, we're going to, we're going to have to try it like with just the three of us and okay, I'm going to try one, one, two, three, four songs on bass and then we'll try one two three four same song <laughs> on guitar and you guys tell me what we got <laughs> see it goes all the way back to that thing it, it is the greatest time for music explore, exploration because you guys are trying to figure out the answer and and and, and that's that to me is the journey yeah yeah and it, it, what's cool about it too is you know we can take my my either my guitar line or my bass line pump it through the pa and you know i'm playing along yeah. um, and we just kind of go okay well which sounds better um but and you couldn't do that you know ages ago also the whole way this was recorded, like I would gather up a, a take, send it to Barry, uh, Rick, um, or Mark. Eric is uh, Rickert's in town, uh, so I'd send it to them and just say, "Do we want?" and send it back. And if I need some, I'll you know I'll just say, "Can you change this or add this?" and um, go from there. And the, other, the old days, you had to go to. A st- I mean, you still what I guess is your Dave Grohl. You had to go to the studio. Yep. You have to ch- hope you get the same sounds. Hope the humidity in the air is the same. You know, so you get the same sounds. Whereas now it's, you know, you can get it perfect, and it, you don't have any uh, degrading due to the tape. Or there was a lot of stuff with the tape in that era that's kind of romanticized. Yeah. Um, but without the ability to do this stuff in the modern age, like the just what I call the cut and paste method. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know how we would have gotten this done. <laughs> you know, because that man, I'm trying to cut and paste. There'll be things like, oh, Barry sent one yeah. over, and he's like, oh man, can you add this? Because I I wanted to play it, but I didn't, you know, but I wanted it to go double or whatever. Sure. So I just you know kind of moved it around to his liking. He's like, cool, done. You know, the old days you try to do that with tape. Yeah, good luck. God, I, to to be a fly on the wall in your studio, I I just can't imagine you with that that computer screen in front of you and you're building that song because I mean your imagination it, it's not here on the on this planet it's long long away. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It's it's, it's always trying to tune into that universal radio. You yeah, know? I hope you get the I hope you get the right channel. And there's guys you know that I've certainly played with and been around. It's like, okay, why are you on that channel? Because that seems to be a lot purer signal than the one I'm getting. <laughs> and I'm jealous. Can you at least hint where you are? Um, <laughs> but yeah, but you know, like you said, once you hit into it and once it clicks, you just make sure you 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 have the volume up because you're going to want to pay attention. Yep, yep. Dude, you got to come back to this show anytime in the future. The door is always going to be open for you. Glad to. Thank you so much for having me. Oh man, thank brilliant answers, dude. Because I I want to I want to share the story of music. I don't want to just sit here and just go blah 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 blah. But it, I mean, right, it, yeah. when when you share the story, you've now given the listeners the inside sleeve of an album. Yeah, man. And, and when I used to listen to interviews, that's that's what I listened for. Um, and like, what insight can I get here? And uh, you know, it's kind of a analytic kid in that sense but i would just study that stuff yeah. like, okay why did you do this and why did you do that <laughs> or why not even you know same and then the cool thing about this career is you get to meet those guys and, and gals later and ask them if you didn't get it then yeah you know you kind of go through this okay i gotta play like i wasn't a fan and we're just friends and we're peers and then <laughs> hey man i gotta ask you something you know, <laughs> you know and i've gotten that too i've had people come up to, come up to me and we're hanging out all day and they're you know, some some you know uh like at nam or whatever and then all of a sudden they throw me dude i gotta ask you a question I'm like, sure what <laughs> I'm a huge fan. I used to go see you guys in Detroit all the time. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm just going, holy crap, really? <laughs> because it's it's just fun when it turns around and you just it's so humbling. Yeah, yeah. You know? And um, uh, it just, but it just reminds me of the the same thing I did. You know, I'm, and but and thankfully for me, everyone I did that to. Okay, man. I you know remember the first record? You know that type of stuff. They were always so gracious and always cool. All of them, every single one. There was not one who was like. Uh, I don't know, dude. I was, you know, I was throwing out my mind. I don't care. You know, I got to go. You know, I got to get to the thing with the guy, and I'll see you. Nope. Nobody ever did that. Yeah, I think I've only had one bump up with, with somebody. It was Randy West, and it was because uh, I, I asked him a question about a guitar riff, and he goes, what song were you listening to? And I thought, oh, what what I do wrong? what I do wrong? But wow. he, he wasn't in the mood to, he wanted everything to be my interpretation, not his story, if you know what I mean. Sure. Oh, I totally get that, too. Absolutely get that. And I, because I would ask fans out they say hey what's this song about and I say well what, what was it sound like to you like when Phil was doing the video for Take It All <laughs> I, I'm thinking just you know like you said kind of this born dignity bread fight you know let's I picture someone like Chris Jericho coming out yeah. in the wrestling you yeah. know just yeah. going here I come man here I come <laughs> and uh, I'm thinking okay that's kind of what I had for it and then when Phil pushed I said I said, think like medieval wars think like you know down to its simplest most honest you know, I guess in a way brutal expression 
uh, and start there, which gets back to that point um, you asked me about, which is I want your stuff. Yeah. You know, I'm, you know, my, all my, uh, I'm 80% Irish, no, 88% Irish. Um, and so, you know, the Irish are just invaded over and over and over, <laughs> you know, as Phil Lynott points out in you know, Emerald and other songs. And um, I think that's, you know, that's p- part of your bloodline. And um, I was like, you know what? Just go with that. And he, he just knocked it out of the park. Wow. Dude, you have yourself a brilliant day today, okay? Thank you once you again too. for the Thank story. Thank you so much for having me. Have you, a great Memorial Day weekend. You well, bet. Done, but you know. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs>